welcome. It's Dr. Ken here with you again. This is electromagnetism lesson number two, the second part, part B, as we look at electromagnetic coils. So let's get into the lesson. So again, this lesson is about the relationship between magnetism and uh, electricity. And uh, we're going to look at that relationship with a little bit of an extra complication. So in particular, we're going to explain electromagnets and a number of terms and related magnets. We're going to revise a little bit of that. But in particular, we're going to look at what's called the electromagnet. How do we make an electrical magnet? So here's the electromagnet. If you remember from the last time, we had, whenever we put a current through a wire, we got a magnetic field around that wire. Well, what happens if we start putting those wires into nice little tight coils? And what if we put those coils around air as the example on the screen? Or maybe we start to put those coils around other things that will conduct a magnetic field like soft iron, steel, those kinds of things. So the magnetic field in a coil of wire is the same as that of a permanent magnet. So again, if we look at our electrical current, and let me just turn my pen on, and again, let's note that the current is going positive to negative, and as the current goes through, of course, there are these little cylindrical magnetic fields being built up along each of the wires. But of course, all these currents are going in the same direction. And what did we learn from lesson one? That if all the currents are going in the same direction, then the magnetic fields combine. So these smaller magnetic fields suddenly start to combine and create the one larger magnetic field that I'm kind of just drawing in now generally. And we get a bigger magnetic field. Of course, on the opposite side of the coil, we've got those same rings building up but of course they're in the opposite direction to the ones on this side but again we're building up these magnetic fields through the coil and eventually what we end up with is the two magnetic fields combine in the same direction down the center and they come down the center and then they break away around the outside. They come down the center, they break away around the outside. So we end up with a south end and a north end and this three dimensional donut shaped magnetic field that wraps itself not only around the wire, but wraps itself around the entire coil. So effectively, the coil looks like a bar magnet because we've got a north at one end, a south at the other, and a magnetic field that is wrapped all the way around in three dimensions. Can't draw that too well with my cursor pen, but that's what's happening. We're getting this three-dimensional magnetic field that is running around our entire magnet, it's even going down through the cardboard or the paper, which is holding the coil and we're getting this large electromagnetic field around the coil. We have another right hand rule. So again, if you've got a coil and you're passing current through it, if you take your right hand and you point your right hand in the direction of the current, which is what we've got here, your thumb will point to the northern side of the field. It will be easy to remember. So your thumb always points north if your fingers are pointing in the direction of I, the current. And here we've got a soft iron core and we've got a large, again, three-dimensional electromagnetic field wrapping around the conductor. So we can use a thing called the right hand rule to find the north pole or if you know what the north pole is and you want to find out what the direction of the current is you can use it the other way around that's fine but it's still the 
right hand rule for a coil. So we've got a right hand rule for a wire and a right hand rule for a coil. So magnetic force is called. So the strength of the magnetic field produced by an air cord electromagnet depends on the coil current and the number of turns. So we're going to just use air coil at the moment. Got a permeability of one as air. So air electromagnet depends on the amount of current and the number of turns. So the product of these two values is called the magnetic force. So magnetic force is Fm. Just turn my pen on so I can underline that for you. So we're simply picking up the F for force and the M for magnetic. So Fm being magnetic. So that's simply where the F comes from, and that's where the M comes from, if it wasn't already obvious. So the formula is Fm equals I in amps multiplied by N in turns, number of turns. So Fm, magnetic force, in ampere turns, because we're playing with amps and turns, our current is in amperes, and N is the number of turns. So magnetic force has to do with how strong, how dense the magnetic field is. So as an example, let's have a look at these couple of examples here on the board. The first two on the left hand side have the same number of turns but different amount of current. So let's just point that out with my pen. Here, the top one has one amp and 11 turns. The one below has 11 turns, but we've doubled the current. So we've doubled the current. So 11 times one is 11, so you get 11 amp turns of force. So our MF, but if we double the current, then we double the MF. So we get a lot more force. And you can see in the picture, the number of lines of magnetic force have doubled. So you can see here we've got two lines of force and here we've now got four lines of force because we increased the current by double. So let's do the same again over here on the right hand side. Here we've got our got 22 turns so we've upped the number of turns you can see much denser number of wires across our coil a lot more wire wound around but still only one amp so 1 times 22 is 22 AT or amp turns so the amount of flux being produced by this is the same as its counterpart here same amount of flux four lines of flux being produced because there's 22 turns times the one amp but now we take our 22 turns but we punch our current up to two amps and all of a sudden we've doubled it again and now we have eight lines of strength just demonstrating how strong the field is so that gives us two times 22 giving us 44 amp turns. So all in all, you can either double the number of turns to double the magnetic field, or you can double the current to double the magnetic field. So again, it just works in proportion. Increasing the number of turns increases the magnetic field. Increasing the amount of current through those coils also increases the magnetic field. So the magnetic flux produced by an electromagnet is proportional, that's the suit. That's the word to remember here, proportional to the current and the number of turns. So nothing like a quick little example to explain. Here we have electromagnetic force developed by an air coiled coil. 250 turns and it's pulling 30 amps. 
so we know that fm equals i times n so it's simply for 30 amps turn my pet on for 30 amps multiplied by the 250 turns so that's where the turns comes from and of course this is where the current for 30 amps comes from so our fm is 7500 of course you've got to have the amp turns or we could have just said amp t to abbreviate amp terms so we also have a force called magnetizing force and magnetizing force is how many amp turns of coil are there over a particular length so we've worked out amp turns but we weren't talking about how much magnetic field over a particular length so now we're just going up a step and we're thinking about how long the magnetizing field is so we've got magnetic force but as soon as we now introduce length we turn that into magnetizing force so if we take our magnetizing force and spread it over a large distance you'll notice that the the field decreases it's gone down there's only two lines here of force but if we take the same force and we halve the length but they've got the same amp turns you'll notice the field's gone up by four because we've compressed the field the field doesn't have to stretch as far around the outside in the air therefore this field is four times sorry two times stronger goes from two to four so there's a direct relationship again between magnetizing force depends on amp turns and the coil and the length of the magnet will determine its magnetizing force so amp turns remember from the previous slide our fm equal to current i multiplied by the number of turns n but now we're adding a new dimension to that of length whoops I meant to put a t there length th length and that is magnetizing force so the equation for magnetizing force is this h equals fm divided by l the length or we could say h is equal to i times n divided by the length and this is because let me get my pen out of course fm which is this bit here is also equal to i times n we can simply substitute in the i n because they are directly proportional they're both on the uh, numerator so here h is the magnetizing force again in amp ter turns but it's per meter so here's our units an amp turn per meter fm or magnetic force is the n times the i in amp turns and l is the length of the magnetic path in meters so again here's some different shapes with different amounts of coils and different lengths of magnetic path Uh, let me just get to my pen here on a you can see the average mag 
length of the magnetic core in this particular case is 12 centimeters. Now it's going around a C shape. That's the length from there to there. Is 12 centimeters. This one has a six centimeter B, has a six centimeter path. So our magnetic field is only six centimeters long. So the magnetizing force is less in A than it is in B. C, they're both comparing C and D. C is a coil of wire with air as the core, but it's three centimeters long. B is the same coil, but we've put an iron core in. So the magnetizing force in C, for C and for D, is the same for both cores. Because the path is the same length, the number of turns is the same, the number of current is the same. Therefore, the path is the same. So magnetizing force is the same in all parts of an iron core is inversely proportional to the length of the core. So again, another example, we have a coil of a thousand turns wound on 75 millimeter long iron core has a current of 0.2 amps passing through the coil. What's the magnetizing force H in the core? So again, we know that we have a thousand turns, two amps and a length of 0.75 of a meter. Remember we've turned our 75 millimeters into meters. So our H is N on I divided by the length. So 1000 times 0.2 divided by 0.075 and we have 2,666 amp turns per meter. So let's sum up what we've learned with electromagnetism in lesson two part A and B. The magnetic force is the force that establishes and maintains a magnetic flux in a magnetic circuit. The symbol uses Fm and it's measured in ampere turns with the amount of current multiplied by how many turns of wire make up the coil. Magnetizing force is the magnum the magnetic force per unit length normally measured in meters. For air cord solenoid, the length is that of the coil. For iron core solenoids, it's the average length of the iron core. The symbol is H and the unit is the ampere turn per meter. So it's magnetic force per meter gives us H. Magnetic flux is the total number of lines of an electromagnet or permanent magnet that it produces. So that's the, the magnetic flux is the number of lines. Flux density is the number of lines per square meter, if you remember, and the symbol is B. And the unit is the Tesla, named after Nikola Tesla. We can use the right hand thumb rule, can be used to find the north pole of an electromagnet. As long as your fingers are pointing in the direction of the current, then your thumb points to the north. Adjacent carrying, sorry, adjacent current carrying conductors will have a force acting to repel them. Currents in different directions, that is, or attract them if the current is in the same direction. So conductors that have current in the same direction, like a coil, then the magnetic fields combine and produce a bar magnet effect. If they're in opposite directions, they will push each other away. They will try and actually cancel each other out. 
So this brings us to the end of electromagnetism lesson part, sorry, electromagnetism lesson two, the end of part B, and that completes our two lessons in electromagnetism. Hope you've learnt a little bit more about electromagnets.